Good afternoon, everyone. Hello there. Hello, hello. Do I see a Fabrice in the call? That's the first time. <laughs> Hi, Karim. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I was connected last week as well. Uh, I wasn't there last week. All right, let's get started. Sorry, I wasn't very well prepared. Came out of another meeting uh, and had to rush to this one. Um, so let me see. Um, welcome everyone to the Eric and Jessica Broken Group call, June 22nd. Um, uh, I need to remember you to abide by the hyperledger code of conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, if you would like to add yourself to the attendees list, so people know you, you were here, um, feel free to do so. Um, with that covered, is there anyone here that's new today and would like to introduce themselves or share what they're working on? Cool. I think I recognize uh, most of you here today. Um, and quickly some status updates. Did we have a bifold call this week? Anyone that knows or attended? Yes, I was there. Um, although I was late, I didn't catch all of it. Um, it looks like they're on the home stretch of integrating AFJ 4.0 or 040. Um, there's just a few little remaining things. I think a, a code review and some merge collisions to clean up, but they're very, getting very close to that. And that's going to, when that, once that's done, that's going to trigger a whole bunch of other activities around looking at moving to the latest React Native and um, you know, updating a whole bunch of dependencies and the like. Um, so that was, uh, I think, a fair amount of the uh, of the discussion um, was around that. There's also been, uh, they're starting to publish their first NPM packages and started off with OCA. Um, it's in an alpha at the moment, but they're using that one to learn. Uh, and before moving on to publishing other parts of the uh, project in NPM. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, the, the PR for AFJ 040 has been over for a long time, uh, uh, but I think they're now finally, it's now finally ready to, to get merged. Uh, so it's a good thing. Um, this week, ah, that's good to hear, Keith. Uh, I saw that Jason uh, fixed some of the last merge conflicts. Uh, uh, nice. Um, Eris call. Um, I can give a quick update. There was a discussion. Um, there were a few discussions. Um, one on uh mediators and how do you do a uh, scalable mediation um and this show um announced a socket doc i think it's called which is like a way that you can put in front of your mediator that can keep web sockets open and and like is agnostic of the agent 
running behind it so you can have like that separated um, and that makes the, the agent mediator itself a lot more scalable. Um, don't know if there's anyone from the initial team on the call today. Um, give a Greetings, Timo. Hi. Any uh, thing I missed or you would like to add? Uh, no, I mean, it's just a way to manage web sockets and uh, make it a connectionless uh, 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 process between uh, the sockets and the service on the back end. Uh, so that way you don't have to maintain an open web socket and you have a good way to send messages uh, through the web sockets um, from the mediator. Uh, this allows uh, the um, cluster environment not have to pass messages back and forth between the different um, services on the back end. So for example, Akpi, uh, I know a lot of people are trying to figure out, well, how do I make sure that the web so uh, the uh, message makes it to the right node that's holding a open WebSocket connection? And so that's the main problem that uh, socket dot, uh, uh, Docket sock was trying to solve. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And um, so you have tested with Eris Cloud Agent Python, right? As a mediator, it should be quite doable, also, right? To to integrate this with an AFJ mediator. No, we actually tested this with our um, our Cloud Skill mediator, which is a separate uh, mediation based on. Um, uh, right now, Amazon Lambda but is open to other other platforms. Um, okay, but uh, we know the Akapai community has been talking about uh, needing to solve the same problem, so we we brought this out and open sourced it for everyone. Cool. Okay. Um, well, uh, in addition, um, there was a. I think that took over most of the meeting. I I'm probably forgetting something that was discussed. Um, it was a very short discussion about the open wallet foundation stuff again. Uh, maybe we can get into that later a bit. And it was something else that I'm forgetting here. I think, no, I think most of it went into the mediator stuff. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, cool. Then uh, for the agenda today, um, we have the DitCon V2 discussion. Uh, Artem is here today who can give uh, an update on like um, um, what's the current status of the DitCon V2 branch, um, what's like uh, limitations of the current implementation. I think also like what, what were the limitations when um, the work stopped in, in November and like, uh, are there any things like what's still blocking to get it merged? Um, and when can we use it? Um, and I think then we can start out, uh, we can have a short discussion maybe on the Open Wallet Foundation discussion. Um, and maybe we can continue on the, um, on the Wallet API discussion. Uh, I don't see Ariel here today, but he created the discussion and I think we, yeah, uh, ended the meeting last week with him having given a presentation, uh, but not really, uh, um, yeah, uh, next steps. Um, if time permits, we can also get into the documentation and getting started uh, being continued. Um, um, yeah, and otherwise we'll put that to the top of next week's uh, agenda. Uh, any things people are missing or would like to get addressed or discussed this week or in a future meeting? Well, one thing Ariel just joined, so that's good. Um, ah. Typically, I don't know if we uh, can do that this week or if it's part of the Open Wallet Foundation, but you and I had a discussion about um, recently about some ideas on not, I guess it's not modularizing the framework because we've already done that, but like splitting it up into uh sort of standalone libraries um maybe we can yeah. touch touch on that i i asked baron to give a presentation on that in the next few weeks so uh uh i ah, think it would okay. be good to have that like uh, have a dedicated presentation call yeah. to to it uh cool but yeah good point 
Cool. Okay, then let's get started. Uh, Artem, do you want to share your screen uh, or how do you want to, uh, to do this? Uh, yes, I would like. I prepared several slides uh, to better understand. Perfect. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Artem. If somebody doesn't know, I work for this R. And uh, I, today I'd like to cover the current status of Gitcom v2 branch uh, support in uh, areas from work JavaScript. Uh, the initial work was done in last year, November, by Sigpa, uh, but it was put on hold uh, and didn't finish at the time. Now, with this, I volunteered to complete it, uh, finalize uh, and get it finally supported there. Uh, we did some work which I'm going to cover uh, during this presentation. Uh, here is the uh, agenda. Uh, first of all, a uh, brief, uh, really short overview of what the key difference of Gitcom V2 comparing the first version uh, next I'll tell uh, what was done uh, in November and uh, last days. Uh, uh, after that cover concerns and issues about the current implementation uh, and what's wrong and after what next steps. Uh, Okay, uh, the specification of Git Convit can be found here. Uh, I'm going to share this presentation uh, attached to the meeting uh, afterwards. Uh, the key requirements and characteristics of uh, the protocol preserved are the same as for Git Convit 1. It's, it's designed to be secure, private, decentralized, and transport agnostic. And the key difference is that it's designed to be routable. Uh, what it means, uh, it means that uh, each message of the protocol uh, should include everything needed to interact uh, with another party. So you don't need any kind of explicit uh, handshake protocol like it was before when parties establish connection and exchange messages using the ideas uh, they exchanged in advance. Uh, now, idea is same like for emails. Uh, if party knows the DID of another one, uh, it can easily prepare the message for him and pack it and send it. Uh, resolve for all required information based on the DID, DID document, uh, and send it directly and interact. Uh, what's done? Uh, first change, uh, this is crypto. JSON uh, web envelope uh, used for Gitcom v2 differs from the first version. There are uh, another set of uh, cryptographic methods uh, which are used under the hood. Uh, the general format is uh, the same, uh, but uh, different crypto operations. Uh, and uh, we initial implementation was done using Sigpa uh, Gitcom library. But uh, in fact, it didn't uh, good uh, suit for AFJ architecture. Uh, it requires implementations of the interface and making some methods of the wallet public. Uh, and it was uh, decided to change uh, JVE or compact methods uh, to use uh, ASCAR directly as it's currently it's a plugin. Uh, optional wallet storage, which can be used, uh, and it provides all necessary crypto. Uh, so we implemented uh, pack and pack functions, and now they support uh, both versions, Gitcom uh, v1 and v2 for uh, areas of SCAR wallet. Uh, Indie wallet uh, do not provide uh, crypto methods required, uh, and uh, for now it's not supported. Uh, it cannot be used with Gitcom V2. I believe it can be done in future, but uh, for now we postponed it and uh, skipped. Uh, so Ares Ascar is the uh, only option for the moment. Uh, next messages. Uh, we define it uh, common agent message interface. Uh, which define set of uh, common methods, how base agent message should look like. And this interface used across of the core package uh, to reuse uh, 
common logic. Uh, there are implementations for DITCOMV1 and V2, which define the general structure of the messages. And uh, if you are going to implement uh, some specific protocol, uh, you should uh, extend uh, messages from the protocol uh, and reuse uh, either first version or second version of DITCOM message implementation. Uh, it's currently inside of core. Uh, message receiver, uh, almost there were almost no changes there. Uh, fun functions handle both versions. Uh, everything is hidden inside of the ASCAR wallet. Uh, unpacked method, uh, it returns uh, uh, the version of unpacked message. So doing the next step, we can determine uh, which version of the message uh, is used. Uh, for sender, uh, currently there are two versions uh, for methods uh, for send messaging. Uh, the reason for it is, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, for DITCOM V2, there is no concept of the connection. And uh, this is key uh, reason why we had to create two versions for sending message function. Uh, I'll touch this topic once again later. Uh, the, the key thing to understand right now is that uh, there is uh, send v2, uh, which version of the function which doesn't depend on the connection object. It uh, takes, uh, it resolves all necessary information from uh, using from and to fields of the message. Uh, it results the ID documents of sender and recipient. Uh, it finds uh, keys uh, which can be used uh, with common key type. And it also resol resolves the service, which is supported by both parties and send it directly. Uh, for V2 version, the functionality is uh, smaller. It's limited comparing the first version there is no support for sessions for message queue for priority it can be done as the next steps uh, for now we just wanted to demonstrate that uh, messages can be sent and received uh, and we can exchange messages uh, protocols uh, for the moment, there are adoptions for two protocols out of band, a uh, really basic version, uh, just uh, creating uh, an invitation message, which can be uh, transferred to another party, and another party can accept out of band invitation and create uh, state connection state object. Uh, and uh, another protocol is uh, Trust Ping. Uh, it also a uh, basic one, as uh, there are just two messages, uh, ping and ping response. Uh, party which accepted out of band invitation uh, can send a ping message uh, to the inv inviter. Uh, inviter upon on receival Trust Ping. Uh, process it, uh, and if a response is requested, uh, send a response back using uh, sender ID. Uh, the implementation approach is the same as for supporting multiple versions for DITCOM v1 protocol. For example, for issues of the presentation, we have two versions. Uh, there are folders with protocols for each uh, version define a set of messages uh, connected to protocols, uh, uh, handlers, services, and uh, so on. So here we use the same approach. And uh, for Trust Pink, uh, there are two folders, V1 and V2, uh, and each of them reflects GitCom uh, messaging, in fact. Uh, it may be uh, a problem. I'll touch this topic again later. Uh, moving next. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, how to identify which version to use uh, DITCOM v1 or v2. Uh, when we create invitations, there is a parameter uh, to define in the version explicitly. Uh, when uh, NVT accepts uh, invitation, he creates connection state object. Uh, and uh, inside of connection state object, there is a protocol field 
uh, which was before, uh, and we said the PayT uh, idea of protocol did exchange with two. In fact, there is no such protocol. Uh, we just use it, used it as a constant to identify that uh, this connection object refers to Gitcom V2. And next, when we send a trust ping message using this connection, uh, we know that uh, we need to prepare Gitcom V2 trust ping message and use corresponding encryption and functions. Uh, and uh, about the IDs, uh, we used uh, peer DIDs for both parties. Uh, peer did this method too when service is embedded directly into the DID. Uh, there, there is ability to use another options, but this one is the, mo the, the simplest, I believe. Uh, this is why we chose this one. Uh, we also created a demo. Uh, in the branch, you can find it in the independent folder. Uh, uh, in this demo, you can create uh, out of band invitation. Uh, Alice can accept it. Uh, uh, next, uh, Alice can send ping message and Faber uh, can process it and reply if it's requested. Uh, the important thing here is that uh, there is only one direction of communication right now uh, only Alice can send messages to Faber on the Faber side currently we don't create connection state uh, object uh, I would like to discuss it <laughs> uh, next how we should uh, act here uh, currently right now it is uh, concerns about the implementation uh, as I mentioned, the, the first one is connection. Uh, Gitcom V2 doesn't depend on connection, and uh, parties interact just using DIDs. So should we current AFJ implementation uh, strong depends on the connection state objects, and uh, all protocols requires connection to be established in advance. Uh, and if there is no connection, you cannot send messages. But for Gitcom V2, there is no such requirement. Uh, you can start uh, any protocol just uh, with knowing the ID of another party. So, like, meaning it looks like we do not need uh, such object anymore. But uh, if we want to uh, use as much of we can as we can common functionality and avoid duplication, uh, we need to somehow create fakey uh, or synthetic uh, connection objects. Uh, and this is the uh, first uh, question to answer uh, about how we can, how, how to properly to do it. Uh, the second point is strong, uh, strongly connected to the connection. In fact, uh, as I mentioned, there are two versions uh, of send message function functions. And uh, for Gitcom V2, functionality is limited comparing to V1. Uh, we need to try to unify this version somehow, uh, provide a single method handling both cases. Uh, And once we get a common function, uh, once we get this single function, uh, the set of features for both protocols will be the same. It will be easily to maintain and extend them. Uh, protocols adoption specification, specification for now uh, provides some examples of protocols, how they can be done in Bitcoin V2, but uh, V1 specs defines much more uh, protocols. Uh, for example, Bitcoin V2 doesn't uh, explain how issuance and presentation uh, protocols should change, how they should look like. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, for now, we only adopted out of band in trust ping. Uh, uh, regarding the implementation, another concern, how to properly organize the code. In fact, 
we have two versions of Gitcom v1 protocol, like for issues. Uh, we cannot just create one more folder with v2. It will be confusing. Uh, and we have v2 for Gitcom v1 and v2 for Gitcom v2. Uh, we need to deal here some other way. Uh, find a better approach. Uh, probably uh, we should, we can consider conversions of the messages back and forth and just uh, use some identifier of uh, which version is actually we need to use in the end. Um, uh, crypto, uh, as I mentioned, uh, only Ascar wallet supports Gitcom v2 for now. According to the specification, uh, Gitcom v2 requires resolving of the ID doc documents uh, and because uh, we need to get keys. Uh, this own web envelope also contains uh, key references and we need to resolve the ID documents from the key references. And um, current interface of the wallet do not accept uh, did resolver uh, we cannot inject inject it there and due to this uh, we had to uh, resolve all necessary git documents uh, one layer at top uh, we currently do it inside of the core package so we in fact we already parse uh, GUI and uh, analyze some fields uh, to prepare the documents as parameters and we pass them into pack and pack functions. This is not a uh, good solution, uh, but it allows us to support uh, uh, different uh, GID methods. Uh, if we only limit to use uh, GID peer, for instance, or GID key, uh, we can resolve uh, all necessary information right from the key ID identifier. But uh, if you want to use some other methods like git so or git web, uh, the ID URL doesn't contain a real key, and we need to resolve the ID document first. So in order to provide to support all possible git methods. Uh, the implementation of Gitcom v2 uh, is a little bit spread between uh, wallet and uh, core package. Uh, we need to think how to better organize it or implement or rework the wallet. Uh, and the last uh, concern here is about the ID's creation. Uh, uh, in all out of band service, there is uh, one more function to create uh, pure ID method it can be a duplication of existing logic i didn't check uh, it just uh, left from the november uh, we need to try to reuse uh, existing methods from git register uh, as far as i remember it's quite a new uh, model i uh, just one more thing to take into account uh, what next a part of the concerns uh, which we need to resolve, answer these questions uh, and provide uh, the best solution for them. Uh, we also need to support mediate, mediator. Uh, the initial uh, work was already done in November. Uh, this branch, this merge request is currently closed and uh, outdated. The right ones of conflicts, uh, we need to actualize it as well. In scope of this uh, pull request, we added uh, mediator coordination uh, protocol and the message pickup uh, protocol versions. So uh, right now, Gitcom can be used only with uh, uh, when in point passed as parameter. So it can be used by mobile applications only by services. Uh, and once, once we get implemented uh, mediator support uh, mobiles, Mobile apps also will be able to use this feature. Uh, there is also a concept about the negotiation between parties on uh, what protocols are supported uh, by each of them. 
and uh, how to detect which version of messaging need to be used uh, to send message another party can understand it and the reply uh, we need to adopt more protocols issues in presentation is the most uh, commonly used uh, most powerful uh, and uh, the conv2 also provides not only uh, just on web envelope, but uh, just on web signature and uh, plain text messages. Uh, for, for instance, uh, just, just on web signed uh, message can be used when we transfer the very first message out of band invitation, for example, to uh, to prove that uh, I'm uh, an owner of the DID, which is reflected in the invitation. So we can extend our wallet implementation to provide JVS methods as well. And uh, plain message also can be sent back and forth in some cases. I don't know uh, now examples cannot provide them, but there is such option. Uh, I think that's it that I prepared. I'd like to uh, go a little bit back to concerns and we can discuss each item step by step. Cool. Thanks a lot for this presentation. This is really helpful and uh, uh, yeah, brings us all on the same page where we are. Um, does anyone have questions? I have some, but I would also like to hear from others. Maybe if they have questions or notes on, on, on this presentation. Hey, Colleen, Colleen is here, Colleen from Rain. I don't know if you can hear me well because I'm on, uh, on a workshop at the moment and the connection is not very good. Hopefully you can hear me well. Yeah, uh, I can hear you. Dropping. Yeah, it's dropping quite quite often. Um, uh, Artem, you have mentioned that the next thing that it needs to happen is to have a mediator, right? So that way, uh, once the mediator is there, the mobile applications can can also use that that protocol, right? But I was thinking, I, I think in the Aries um, uh, framework Golang, they have an option to play as a mediator. Do you think that can be used also? I mean, to play the role as a mediator so the mobile phones can connect to that mediator, even if it's on Golang. Uh, what I meant, it's not only to have a mediator deployed somewhere. We need to, inside of AFJ implement protocols uh, required for to communicate with the mediator uh, uh -huh. to be able to talk. And how far do you think it's it's that? Do you think it's a lot of work or something that it can come, you know, in the next month or? Uh, I think it, uh, it can come quite soon. Uh, before working on this, we would like to uh, to resolve uh, concerns which I mentioned before. Uh -huh. uh, as I mentioned, uh, most of the work regarding the mediator support is already was already done in November. Oh, lovely! Okay. And we need to transfer it. It just uh, uh, there are a lot of conflicts, and uh, we need to uh, refresh it. I and, see. Uh, apart apart from the uh, areas from work go, as you mentioned, uh, there should be seek pass uh Gitcom v2 mediator available as well yeah i think uh timo sent it in the chat already ah okay yeah this one uh this is a very basic implementation it uh, not fits for production needs but for testing and for them it's uh, mm -hmm. uh it's good enough it supports only Gitcom v2 not first version and uh, it mm -hmm. it's in nest.js and it uses SQLs Gitcom library under the hood. I see. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think one thing um, I'm interested in is is uh, uh, there's a few, but I think uh, it's like how do we deal with connections in Ditcom V2. I think you also added it here. Um, and like, um, yeah, what, what is the um, 
do people still like do you still create a connection but don't we use like an data exchange protocol so we just like a connection is nothing more than having a record where i store my did and the other parties did and that is enough to have a connection um or do we also want to support basically just sending a message to a did and not having a connection and i think this can have quite some impact on the architecture, for example, if I now want to send a credential offer, um, I can do that to a connection ID only or ID connectionless. Um, well, connectionless. Um, um, in DITCOM v1 is a bit different, I would say, than the like the connectionless in DITCOM v2. Um, so I think, yeah, maybe, yeah, what do we think about, like, should we? require uh, you always to create a connection so if you want to exchange information with a did you can just create a connection record and the only two fields basically it has to uh, um, contain our our did and their did and then when we want to send messages then we have all information um, um, or do we want to allow for yeah connectionless um, exchanges as well uh, where we only use the DIT to send messages. Um, yeah, I don't know if people have opinions on this or Artem, what do you think? Uh, I think we should create the record because it, uh, in any case, it's useful. For, for instance, on the mobile, we'd like to get the list of contacts, uh, which I know and I can send messages. So we can create uh, an instant uh, record just with two EIDs and use it. And it will be simpler to reuse uh, logic for DITCOM v1 and v2, and uh, it's quite, still quite useful from the user experience point of view. I, and I think for, we... as for DITCOM v1, uh, if we look at uh, out of band protocols, there is also option uh, when party, when there is no handshake and party just uh, create, create instant record. And it's quite similar to what we have now. I think there yeah, would be a, a benefit to to just send a message to it without an, having an associated record to it. Um, just mainly for ease of use, if you don't want a a context necessarily with the other party. Um, and if the API is just like if, if the record is just there, that an hour did. Um, I think it would be fairly nice to, instead of supplying a connection ID, you could also just supply it and that takes care of it. Um, don't have a direct use case in my head, but it seems useful to me. And especially if the underlying logic is exactly the same, except for retrieving the connection record, then why not? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it makes sense. It's just not probably the easiest answer in this case because it requires like a very big change to how we handle sending and receiving messages in AFJ but maybe um, we could more like instead of having a connection ID everywhere um, we have something like a recipient and then when you call the API the recipient can either um, like take a connection ID or it can take a recipient did um, and you can optionally then provide a sender did if you want to uh, say like I want to use did, this did for sending the message um, um, we do have to look good then um, for example now we have a credential exchange record which you have a connection ID in um, and um, if you don't um, use a connection ID you can do connectionless and then you have the out of band um record that is associated with it um but if we now also support like direct sending the dit then we would need to have like another type of way to store who we're interacting with and then we would need to store both what's our dit and what's their dit uh, they're using um so i'm thinking how we could have a good abstraction in afj that makes all these kinds of flow possible uh warren yeah, it, I'm not sure uh, how this would work, but uh, I wonder if um, we're conflating a contact with a connection and uh, and perhaps they should be different things. Like perhaps a connection 
doesn't have to be revealed as a contact. And so maybe you can have the same underlying abstraction and then an indication of whether it should be saved as a contact or not. Uh, and then that, that might make the whole abstraction easier to deal with in terms, maybe not if you were starting from scratch, but in terms of you know, trying to bend the existing architecture to support this. Yeah, I think uh, that makes sense. Maybe, yeah. Oh, Ariel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Warren, you you mean that probably if we even if we are sending a message to a did directly, we can still create a a connection record for that exchange because actually I think it it makes sense because every connection will have a our the, the, our did and their did right so. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's a it's a good solution. Maybe we can use the the, the, the concept, or uh, at least internally, the concept of connection for for both uh, for both cases. Yeah, I think it, it maybe would allow us to reuse the connection abstraction we already have, and then we could keep the API very similar, but that you then have different type of connections, and a connection doesn't always mean you have to show it as a contact, but it's more like an uh, cryptographic relation that you have between two two uh, bits. I think, uh, uh, um, yeah, I think, it, yeah, it, isn't the connection just a bit pair? Yeah, in, in this case, I think for like the older, um, in the beginning, like a connection was, uh, it was also, yeah, basically a bit pair because it doesn't provide any trust basically. Um, so yeah, it's basically a bit pair. So, then we could say connection is still the foundation of most of the exchanges, but um, you can have like a thermal connections in that case. Um, and connection is not the same as like really having a contact or a, a long-term relationship. It's just a cryptographic connection. Um, Biren, do you think that that would work also? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think uh, introducing just yeah, if you have a connection record, then you introduce ephemeral, true, false, and that would basically be a contact or a connection. Something along those lines um, would be good. Um, I think just for, like from the API, if you could just supply it and then under the hood, it would create a connection record. Um, that would be like a short-lived connection record or something. Uh, that would be quite quite nice um, and a bit less. Yeah, that you have to retrieve the connection ID first if you already have the bit um just a nicer api i think yeah okay um yeah i think that makes sense um um i think that would also make probably it for now the easiest approach because then we wouldn't have to change that much like we can have the same way to handle sessions um uh, queues everything um uh, let me see there was a comment from alex uh you can still receive a message from a dit you have never seen though right yes that's correct so what do we do in that case um we could create a connection with only um the other parties did um but yeah not sure how we should happen let's say you receive a credential offer from um a did um you don't have a connection with um how how will we handle that do we create a connection record on the fly um or but yeah i mean that that requires if we don't create a connection record on the fly it, it requires custom logic in the protocol implementation i think so uh yeah that's a good question I, I think that if we design on something that would be a configuration option, um, because mainly I think if you have someone's dead and you can uh, send them uh, a big amount of, of messages to, I don't know, to, to DDoS them or whatever, um, you would probably drop them if you don't have the connection, if you are a, a big party or maybe it's a small party. Um, but yeah, if you receive something from, if, and if you don't want to receive any random message from other people, I can imagine that you would also just want to ignore them. Um, 
That, yeah. that kind of that kind of sounds like an application layer decision. Yeah, that's, that's why I mean configuration. So you can configure as an app uh, in AFJ to what would happen with the messages. Right. I guess what I'm I'm wondering is, uh, are you thinking about a configuration that would be global or a configuration that would could be more granular? Because you you may want to allow traffic from like uh, basically ask the user whether they want to accept something in some cases, but they also may want to create a block, for instance, on certain DIDs so they don't get bothered about it. Um, and I don't know that it, that AFJ would be able to make that kind of decision on its own. It would need to be uh, like run to, at runtime. Yeah, I, I think that, that that could also work. Um... Not so I don't know whether sure. like a, a, a connection like under the hood, I suppose a a dynamic connection could be created or, you know, the uh, whatever notification gets sent to the application layer could provide a context that needs to be passed back. And if that context is provided and passed back, then you can establish the connection at that time or discard it if, you know, there's no action taken or like, so you don't end up with junk in your connection list for things that the user doesn't want to deal with at all. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure on the exact implementation. Um, I, I think what you just proposed sounds, sounds good to me. It's just as long as uh, it is something that should be done by the user. And I think if AFJ, yeah, basically what you just said is AFJ, we can't really make that decision. Um, so I don't think we should yeah. deal with it in, uh, in a way like that. I, I think there's probably also a happy medium now that I think about it, which is perhaps, you know, you, um, depending on the application, the application might say, okay, this is the default behavior I want, AFJ, just take care of it. Um, and the default behavior might be, you know, send me everything or, you know, send me nothing if it's unsolicited. Um, uh, and then they have the ability to do the filtering themselves. So maybe maybe there's a happy medium where there's some kind of configuration that would allow for some default behavior that would be valuable for some use cases, but the flexibility to let the application make it behave the way they want. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think that having a simple default with a way to customize whether it's a uh, uh, an interface you have to implement or a callback where where you can basically implement your own spam filter as, as Alex said, I think that that makes sense. Um, um, yeah, I think what I would really like to have in a solution is that it is something we can handle generically and not something that has to be per se handled by the protocol implementation so that the issue credential protocol doesn't have to account for maybe maybe there's a connection maybe not maybe it's from a dit maybe it's a dit confused like that it's uh, because then the the the, the ways becomes like exponentially complex for each protocol to implement but for example having a um dynamic connection which is first marked as like uh, like in verified or like unhandled or we have a a callback interface where you can dynamically verify incoming messages and say like all right i want to accept this message and that will create like a uh an uh dynamic connection um i think that's yeah interesting approaches to explore um, um What do you mean, Alex, with uh, other non-AFJ agents need to support connections to interact with it? Not sure if you can talk, but... Uh, uh... I think he's probably agreeing with you that you don't want this in the protocol layer for the individual protocols, if I read this correctly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I, yeah. I may be misinterpreting, but that's my. 
Thank you. So, and I think that I think that's a good thought that the protocols probably shouldn't have to be aware of this. Okay. Right? Yeah. It's an, so we, it's, we an inter, it's an internal it. implementation detail as to whether you know uh, an unsolicited request becomes a connection or not, um, and whether that connection ultimately is revealed as a contact or not. Those are kind of application level decisions and not not protocol or network based decisions. I would think. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, I think in a lot of cases, like uh, when you use peer to peer dates, then uh, like there, there's like you wouldn't just randomly receive messages. Um, um, so maybe we should look at then what what would be a good first iteration that we can have without making it too complex. Like I think there's been a lot of work in the Ditcom V2 uh, branch and there's some stuff missing, but I do think it would be good to have it get it ready to merge and then we can iterate on it. Um, um, so um, Artem, do you think like something like this where we create dynamic um, connections, um, whether we have the, the way to like uh, have a dynamic, maybe we can for now keep it with a simple default behavior like you allow or disallow. Um, do you think that that would be something we could implement quite easily into the Ditcom V2 branch? I believe yes. Okay. Um, cool. Um, are there any other things then that we would be um, that would need to be addressed? Um, like I think mediation is a nice thing um, to have, but also something we can add um, in a follow-up iteration. I think if we have like a first thing merged with just out of band and trust ping, then it becomes easy to add other uh, ones. Do do people see any other parts uh, um, about yeah that need to be addressed or or things to note here? I guess I just have a question. I'm not sure where the specification work is at at the moment on the protocols layered on top of Didcom V2. I'm getting the impression from some of this discussion that that work has either not been done yet or is incomplete. Um, can you fill me in on what the state of, of that is and, or whether like part of this work has to be actually defining the new or redefining, if necessary, the new protocols to fit into Didcom V2? I think there has been work done. Uh, so for example, if we want to do mediation, there is a mediate coordination V2, which is basically the Didcom V2 adaptation after the V1. So not really a lot of change in functionality, but optimized for using it with Didcom V2. And there's some other protocols. So for example, um, or is it the issue credential v, V3 um, has been defined, which um, works with um, um, Didcom V2. Um, so there is some work being done, but not too much yet, I would say. Uh, so we're probably going to run into some issues. And as you can see, it's like there's not a lot of activity on here. Um, um, I think there has been work also on a um, Eris intro profile V3, which is based on Didcom V2. Um, and then supports issue credential and present proof V3, which are DITCOM V2. Um, so, and I think that the requirements for DITCOM V2 uh, intro profile would be a lot less because a lot of it is already incorporated into DITCOM V2 um, itself. So there is a foundation we can build on, um, but it's, yeah, I would say newer territory. Um, that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Cool. Um, then, um, Artem, do you have time in the coming weeks or so to 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 work on these final tasks? I know that uh, Farine, um was interested also in the the Ditcom V two uh, work. I don't know if. Ah, I think 
he left to go. Um, yeah. Oh, well, so I will ask them next week. But um, yeah, do you have work uh, time to work on this or? <clears throat> I try to find a little bit time. Unfortunately, I'm quite, quite busy for the moment. Uh, and uh, if I will be able to change, to apply this change uh, quickly, uh, or if I have some problems and I understand that it takes longer time, I'll notify you and inform. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a good answer. Um, okay, thank you. And I think, uh, yeah, we at least, I think it was a good discussion and we have some consensus on like, how, how do we want the API and integrate it with the connections? Um, so then we at least know what's still left and needs to be done. Um, cool, thank you for this presentation. Could you uh, attach it to the, uh, the meeting notes? Uh, yeah, attach, but for some reason it shows unknown attachment. I'll try to, uh. to do it once again. I think yeah, it it uh, it it's uh, oh, added it's here. here. Uh, I think if I do it like this, I can. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I can download it as an attachment. That's that's perfect. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Um, so we're out of time basically. Um, um, I wanted to still discuss the Open Wallet Foundation. Maybe I can also put it in the Discord and we can pick it up next week. Um, but I was curious to hear like. Um, what uh, 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 we have already discussed it here a bit, but whether um, the AFJ community would be interested in like a potential move of the project um, to the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, Arise, uh, like from the Arise discussions there came out of like, um, we're not ready to move uh, currently to OWF also because it's very early stage, uh, but that, we are looking at more collaboration and maybe moving projects over gradually. Um, so um, nothing is final yet, but I was thinking like, um, yeah, I'm quite interested in it. So I was thinking we as the Airstream JavaScript community uh, could be like one of those first projects that move over, try to see how it goes, whether everything goes well, and then other projects could be moved on, uh, moved over as well later on. Um, so, yeah, something to this uh, consider. I'll bring it up in more detail next week so we can have a discussion. But uh, yeah, think of that. Uh, uh, yeah, for next week. Um, okay, so then um, we yeah didn't have time for the other discussions. We'll uh, touch on those all next week. Um, thanks all, and uh, see you soon. Thanks. Thanks. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.